Greetings! A number of people have asked me about the history of the Kratky hydroponic method, so today I will try to respond. But first, let's briefly review the suspended pot, non-circulating hydroponic method. Tanks are filled nearly to the top with nutrient solution. A cover with holes in it is placed over the tank. At transplanting time, individual net pots containing growing medium and seedlings are placed into the holes. The lower one half inch or so of each net pot is immersed in the nutrient solution. The entire growing medium in the container moistens by capillary action, automatically providing the plants with water and nutrients. The nutrient solution level in the tanks drops below the net pots within a few weeks, but by this time roots have emerged from the net pots. The roots in the solution continue taking up water and nutrients while roots between the net pot and the surface of the solution become oxygen roots and take up air from the humid air layer between the tank cover and the nutrient solution. In this case, the lettuce crop is harvested before the nutrient solution is exhausted. Then, the tank is cleaned and refilled with fresh nutrient solution and the process is repeated. In the case of a short-term crop like lettuce, the entire crop is grown with a single application of water and nutrients. No effort is needed from transplanting the seedlings until harvest. Longer-term crops may also be grown by a suspended pot non-circulating hydroponic method. These include tomatoes and cucumbers. Additional nutrient solution needs to be added via a float valve throughout the crop. Here is a demonstration tank that was used to grow tomatoes. At transplanting time, the nutrient solution level was about one half inch above the screen. The growing medium in the accelerator pots was moistened by capillary action. The crop grows and the nutrient solution level decreases to about two inches below the screen. It is maintained at that level throughout the rest of the crop by the float valve sump assembly shown on the right. We'll start our historical journey in 1666. At that time, Robert Boyle, an Irish scientist, proved that rainwater alone will not nourish plants. Proper juices such as those present in dung must be added to the water to nourish plants. In 1699, John Woodward, an English scientist, found that the greatest growth occurred in water which contained the largest amount of garden soil. In 1851 to 1855, the French chemist Jean Bossengault established that plants could grow in an inert medium such as silica sand which was moistened with a solution containing chemicals or nutrients. The nutrients did not need to come from soil. Around 1860, both Sox and Knopp eliminated the need for sand as a support for plants and were able to grow plants in only nutrient solution, that is, water and chemicals. Here is a drawing of a plant growing in a vessel of nutrient solution. The drawing was reproduced from the lectures on the physiology of plants by socks. This looks very similar to our suspended pot non-circulating hydroponic method. And I suppose we could stop our history lesson right here. But let us move on. Up until now, growing in solution culture had been mostly a laboratory curiosity. But in the late 1920s and the 1930s, Professor Garricky of the University of California decided to take it to another level and experimented with commercial-sized applications of this new agricultural science, which was becoming known as water culture, soilless gardening, soilless culture, nutriculture, and hydroponics. Since I wasn't sure about the copyright status of the pictures of this system, I made a drawing. The recommended basin or tank which held the nutrient solution would be about six inches deep and might be two to six feet wide and maybe 20, 30, 40 feet long and some tanks could even be as long as 150 feet long. One inch wire mesh or chicken wire was stretched across the top of the basin. 
It was painted with a quick-drying asphalt paint to prevent corrosion of the wire and leaching of the zinc into the nutrient solution. About a 3-inch layer of straw, wood excelsior, or other coarse material was placed on the wire, and this became the seed bed. Roots from the plant grew down into the nutrient solution, and the nutrient solution was allowed to recede up to 3 inches. Thus, Garricky employed a moist air space. The moist air space in the tank plus the air in the seed bed provided adequate aeration and there was no mechanical aeration. Garricky's method provided excellent growing conditions for various crops. For example, 16 pounds per plant of tomatoes were produced. Modern plastics commonly used for hydroponic tanks today had not yet been invented and Garricky's options for tank materials included wood, metal, asphalt roof paper, and concrete. Here is a YouTube video which shows Dr. Garricky back in the 1930s. Arnon and Hoagland, also at the University of California, applied forced aeration into the nutrient solution of the Garricky method hydroponic tanks. Aeration improved the growth of the plants and the yields were 21.1 pounds per plant in the aerated solution treatment versus only 15.7 pounds per plant in the non-aerated solution. Thus, aeration increased the yields by 34%. Thereafter, it was assumed that nutrient solution needed to be aerated. In fact, when I went to school at the University of Wisconsin in about 1967, my class project was to grow beans in an aerated pot of nutrient solution. And clumsy me, I broke the glass tubing into my finger and needed to go to the emergency ward to get it stitched up. Perhaps that gave me some bias against aerated systems. In 1985, I went on a sabbatical leave at the Asian Vegetable Research and Development Center in Shanhua, Taiwan. My immediate supervisor was Dr. Hideo Imai, who was a scientist on assignment to AVRDC from Japan. Dr. Imai showed me some soybean plants growing without aeration, and I inquired how could that be because I learned that hydroponic plants needed to be aerated. This question was answered several years later in a paper by Dr. Imai. In Dr. Imai's method, a seedling bag was made of netting and filled with smoked rice husks, and this was supported by a polystyrene tank cover. There was also a layer of netting 15 centimeters below the tank cover. Initially, the seedling bag was immersed about one centimeter in the nutrient solution. The nutrient solution level decreased as the plant grew, and an increasing air space developed. Roots growing in the air space were called O roots, or oxygen roots. Their main function was aeration and the roots that grew in the nutrient solution were called WN, or water and nutrient roots, and their function was to gather water and nutrients. The oxygen roots are more fluffy and branched than the WN roots. When the WN roots are exposed to air, they take only two to four days to be converted to O roots. However, if O roots are immersed in water, they become non-functional and the plants wilt and possibly may die. Therefore, one shouldn't add more than one or two centimeters of water at a time to these tanks, nor should they be exposed to heavy rainfall. Dr. Imai also discusses a home production system where the tank is a plastic container. It looks and functions very much like systems we commonly see today. It became apparent to me that Hawaii has many areas where the climate is suited for vegetable production, but the soil is too rocky or infested with disease organisms or nematodes, and electricity is either too expensive or not available in many possible production areas. Some adaptation of Dr. Imai's non-circulating hydroponic system would be ideal for Hawaii. After returning to Hawaii, I collaborated on a project with my colleague Dr. Bowen and Dr. Imai, 
where we studied a non-circulating hydroponic system for tomato production. A layer of screen was placed about 10 centimeters below the top cover. At transplanting time, the growing medium was partially submerged in nutrient solution. As the plant grew, the nutrient solution was consumed and eventually the nutrient solution level dropped below the screen, thus creating about a 10 centimeter airspace. Nutrient solution was added once or twice a week to keep it at that level, but we never added more than two centimeters of nutrient solution at a time. During a 62 day harvest period from December to February, yields from the hydroponic tank were 3.5 kilograms per plant versus 3.1 kilograms per plant from soil grown tomatoes. Therefore, this non-circulating hydroponic system was competitive with soil bed production. We then grew lettuce in plastic forestry tubes where the bottom 25 millimeters was immersed in nutrient solution. The initial solution level of 75 millimeters dropped down to about 30 millimeters at harvest time. The hydroponic lettuce yielded about 250 grams per head versus only 201 gram per head for soil grown lettuce. We were excited about the potential of non-circulating hydroponic production and decided to publish it in Hort Technology. The journal reviewers of the article were quite critical, so I knew I had something very bad or very good. I knew it worked, so I thought it was very good, so why not patent it? I applied for and received two patents on my version of the non-circulating hydroponic plant growing system. The two hydroponic patents have now expired, and the technology in the patents may be used freely for any legal purpose. We held the first non-circulating hydroponic workshop in Hilo, and Dr. Imai was our special invited guest speaker. The workshop was very successful, but we never held a second workshop. At some point around this time, I became aware of the advantages of net pots and began to use net pots instead of forestry tubes for short-term vegetables. In 2004, I presented a paper in New Zealand on a suspended pot non-circulating hydroponic method for lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers. In 2005, we wrote a paper on non-circulating hydroponic methods for growing tomatoes. I was very fortunate to spend a sabbatical study leave at Penn State University and our group wrote an article Growing Lettuce by a Float Support Non-Circulating Hydroponic Method in Hawaii and Pennsylvania. A paper entitled Three Non-Circulating Hydroponic Methods for Growing Lettuce was presented at the International Symposium for Soilless Culture and Hydroponics in Lima, Peru. A suspended net pot non-circulating hydroponic method for commercial production of leafy romaine and semi-head lettuce is my flagship article and was published by the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. About five years ago, MHP Gardner demonstrated this hydroponic method in a YouTube video and there have been over 800,000 views. MHP Gardner read one or more of my publications and built a hydroponic tank set up as described in the publication. He wanted to give credit to me as the author of the publication and thus referred to this as the Kratke method. MHP Gardner produced at least five excellent YouTube videos where he described this hydroponic method as the Kratke method. In total, there have been over two million views of these YouTubes. Well, I am somewhat embarrassed because this method really should have been called the Sox method, or the Garricky method, or certainly the Imai method. But with over 2 million views, this suspended pot non-circulating hydroponic method has become known as MHP Gardner has proclaimed it, the Kratke method. And that, folks, is the history of the Kratke hydroponic method as I see it. I bid you aloha.